friends, enemies, and those of you who have yet to decide which one you are, I greet you. Hello. The sun has gone down and the stars have gone up. It is once again night in my studio. It is time for me to continue the story at hand. Last time I introduced to you Edward. Edward was a former co-worker who I lost contact with but after over a decade called me up out of the blue and asked if I wanted coffee at a shopping mall cafe of all places. He had his reasons, I found out later, but I'm getting ahead of myself. He had told me a story of him visiting England. He had stayed in a villa that had at one point been a castle before the Great Wars had started. This castle had a sad history of suicide and deaths connected to a cliff nearby. He stayed in this former castle villa despite odd sounds which he believed were mice in the walls causing scratching sounds, wind in caverns causing moaning sounds and other such ghostly sounds. For he, at that point, did not believe in ghosts, despite the grim connection to this suicide cliff. As he was telling us, though, things took a change during an extremely strong thunderstorm where with a bolt of lightning and a blood curdling scream he dashed out of his villa to a hidden garden that was once part of the castle but was inaccessible outside and saw a woman who seemed to be well, damaged, screaming and crying about possibly killing someone. Let's go back to that cafe and let's go back to talking with Edward, my very nervous friend, shall we? So, Edward, you were telling me that you met a woman who seemed to be in distress. Can you tell me more about that? There's not much I could tell you. Uh, I only saw her for a brief second in that lightning burst. There was thunder and lightning. And then next thing I noticed that she looked like she was going away. It, it looked like she was, like, I only saw her for a brief second. It was madness. It, I, best way to say is, like, if you take multiple colors of skin, I guess, and, and even, like, green blue rotted skin i suppose and kind of imagine them being sewn together that that was what it looked like but again in that split second i only saw so much image my my brain couldn't really process that image person you know it just it, it was, she was you know she was naked but although she was naked it looked like all of her naughty bits was like you know not there it just like, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, don't want to sound pervy, but it was such a strange sight. But maybe, maybe the lightning was playing tricks on my eyes. But I clearly heard that she was calling to someone named Mary. The, the only person I know with that name in that area was, was someone who had owned this villa, like, decades ago. And she was saying that she might have killed John. This was a horrible storm. And I was hearing her clearly despite the rain. I, I 
t- try to calm her down. I couldn't find where she was, and I told her to stay inside, and in the morning, I'll go and try to get her out, help her or whatever. I get back into the villa, and I, you know, I didn't want to wait until morning, but I did try calling the local authorities. You, you know, I, cliche of every horror story, you know, why don't they call the cops? Well, I called the cops. Unfortunately, it was a small area of that this, this villa was in, and the electrical lightning storm had caused problems, so the police were very busy, and they just said, listen, we'll, we'll get to you in the morning, and you know what? That worked perfectly for my time scale anyways, because I told her I'd try seeing her in the morning, and by that time, hopefully the storm would be gone, right? Yes, I completely understand. I'll continue. So morning comes, right? Cop comes, and I tell him the story, and he he doesn't believe me. This this whole area knows everyone that comes and goes. It's a small area, so everyone knows each other. And even though I had not really interacted with the locals, they knew who I was, and that's good. I don't mind. But I told him that I found someone maybe squatting in this garden. He couldn't believe me. A- and he didn't even know how to get into this garden. He, we both walked around a little bit, and he said, you know, there's no way anyone could have been in this wild garden. It's been uh, blocked off for a century, if not more. Uh, but you know what? I told him, listen, let's walk around one more time. Maybe we can find something. And walking around the second time, I found a rock that... Due to the rain, due to the rain, it looked like it was on soft footing. So I kind of persuaded the cop to use some rope and tie it to his car, and we're able to move this boulder, this this rock, away from the garden's entrance. And I was able to get into the garden. We walked around the garden a little bit, and it looked like he was kind of impatient. He wanted to get back to whatever he was doing before he checked up on this uh And he was certain that I had heard nothing, you know, the history and everything, storm, spooky, scary house, you know, people's minds that have interesting images. That that was his idea. Fine. Okay. I let him go home wherever he was going. So I investigated the garden. I thought it was kind of interesting. This garden had not been uh, walked in apparently for like you know quite a long time so i thought it'd be kind of cool to see what else was around maybe i might find some kind of a ancient item and what i did find though i found where the lightning had struck remember i mentioned i i heard a very strong lightning and it shook the the villa a little bit and i heard a scream and that's what caused me to come out i found what the lightning had hit it had hit a metal door and it kind of broke the metal door open. It was kind of hidden, um, but with you know a little bit of investigation, I was able to find it. Of, of course, when I was with the cop, the cop couldn't find it, and you know, so I decided that I was going to investigate on my own. So I decided before I go out and everything that I was going to get a decent flashlight and. Uh, filter mask. I I was kind of worried that there might be mold or something in this area, the cave and, and plant like that might be dangerous. So I brought one along just in case. Um, I have filter mask just for a hobby I was trying to start, but eh, never mind. As I was about to go through the door, I found a glass bottle, kind of wedged by the um, by the door frame I pulled it out and there was a note in the glass bottle uh, I tried to read it but it was kind of long and I was more excited about exploring this door the insides of the door it looked like the door had been closed for quite a long time so I decided to read the note later you know I, I skimmed it a little bit and it said you know from Mary and I'm like okay this is Mary maybe the owner of this um, establishment died probably in the 70s uh, so I, I go through the door and the first thing I notice is well what looks like well a skeleton uh, on the other side 
and I looked around a little bit, and you know, this I wasn't going to call this, this uh, cop back for a skeleton, not just yet. I mean, I'm kind of excited, but you know, I'm just like, ooh, take my take a couple pictures of the skeleton, this crime scene before I continue on. It, the skeleton looked like it had been there for quite a long time, mind you. It probably been there for at least 30 or more years. I'm not an expert on that, but, you know, from movies, uh, there was no flesh on this thing. So I looked around, and it seemed that there was a note, a picture of... Actually, it was a picture of a man and a woman, and it, on the back was a note, and it said, you know that this person was John and Mary, and it said the date of 1941, which, um, I don't know, I mean, I thought this was damaged after the first war, but maybe he had found a way back into this, whatever. I was going to investigate even more later. So I kept on walking down this hallway. It was a, a legit hallway carved in stone. It wasn't a cave or anything like that. And it, this hallway kept going downwards. As I was walking, I noticed that there were candles. So I was so cautiously I lit a candle because I, if there was a gas leak or anything like that, there would have been an, an explosion. I didn't want to have to. Well, I didn't want to be burnt alive, basically. So. I lit a candle, and I'm walking around, I'm exploring, and it looks like a whole underground castle, kind of. There, was, there were rooms that were very decorated, but they had also been looked like they haven't been used in quite a long time. I found, for example, a library, a full-on full scaled library, but each book had so much mildew and so much cobwebs on it that it was I couldn't read the books. I could read some of the titles and they looked like they were m medical titles um, from, you know, quite a long time ago. Uh, so I didn't even want to touch those books. I kept on walking, finding weird rooms that had v old furniture, all of it kind of rotted, kind of moldy. I, I found at least one or two other what appeared to be corpses, skeletons, or things that remained of people. And one of them had a note in his pocket, and it was something that he had written before, I guess, he died, because it looked, it looked very dramatic. And it said something of the nature as, I found that the ghost of this manor is real. I've seen what this ghoul does with the bodies. Well, you know, <laughs> the ghoul ghost. And this body, th this corpse looked like it was, you know, quite old as well. The clothing and everything. You know, when you imagine clothing from, like, 1600s, that's what it was dressed like. And, of course, most of the clothing was half deteriorated from the, from the mold and everything. But this was an interesting exploration. I'm glad I had my little filter at that time. As I was walking, I kept on going down. I just didn't have enough sense to go back up. I should have at that point because I kept on getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And I was finding myself getting more and more interested in what was going on. And then at one point I heard water. Which kind of got me to, well, a little room that smelled horribly bad. This room smelled so bad, and using my flashlight, I discovered well, blood stains, it's blood stains upon blood stains, and bones upon bones. My guess is that anyone who used that cliff for the suicide, their body was probably pushed through caverns to this room. That that was only a guess, because the stench of decay and death in that room was seeping into every particle there. I, I, I had to get out for a split second and I was almost thinking about going back up and finally calling the authorities and explain, I found interesting stuff. Maybe someone could legit come down with better lights. Now, I had a flashlight, 
but it was just a one-man team. And I was half thinking, maybe I should go back up and call the authorities. Until then, I, well, well, I saw her. And that's, and that's, and that's when I, I, I realized, well, I need a new, I need a new pants, basically. Because even in the dim light, she came out and, hold on, she, her, are we playing the pronoun game now? No, um, she never really got a name. Um, I think she was saying that someone had called her Galatea. But it was maybe this John she had mentioned before. Um, Let's go with Galatea. Okay. Yes, sounds prominent. Galatea. You mean the same Galatea off of that myth of the statue coming to life and so on and so forth? Yeah, yeah. You can Google it if you want. But yes, that's... There's more to that myth, but yeah, Galatea was a statue that came alive and fell in love with its maker. This, though, this Galatea did not fall in love with her maker. I'll I'll go into that more, but when she came out, she was wearing a wooden mask that was painted white. Um, and despite the very darkness of the hallway... My candle and my flashlight was able to just briefly add some light, and it was spooky as hell. It just... She was wearing a wig that kind of looked like a hood made of hair, uh, a black hair. Um, it didn't really fit properly. It fit over her wooden mask. Her wooden mask was lacquered white. It was shiny, and these weird red lips that were also very shiny look it, it, neutral kind of but her eyes was was just god I couldn't escape her eyes her eyes were just this murky yellow I just kept staring half out half open not fully staring at you but at the same time staring at you and she also appeared to be wearing a long sweater that had been very bloody that covered from her whole body from her knees up, up long sleeves and everything and a gray but bloody sweater and I saw her and she looked at me and 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 I realized that I was not looking at a statue or a painting or or a person or a decayed body or or, or, or anything I could fully understand. I, although the mask did help, I guess, the mask also added to the creep factor. And I, I realized that beyond that wooden mask and that wig the, and then that bloody, battered sweater that there was a person or a thing that was living... And for the first few minutes, she didn't say anything. Galatea just, just stared at me. And I just, I, I tried to, I, 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 I lost what I, 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 I. Well then, it seems that our poor Edward had a fright that day. And I think at this point it is good for us to pause and continue this story another time. Well, friends, before I go, I hope you do not mind a little bit of upkeep for the house. As a YouTuber, unlike many, I do not often say please like or subscribe or share my videos. I believe the free will of doing so is for the viewer. But, I recently was told that there is an algorithm that helps YouTube videos become more and more noticed if the YouTuber says that. So please click, like, subscribe, share, or anything else you might feel they need to click. And also, I may boldly and modestly tell you about my Patreon. 
Yes, friends, I do have a Patreon account. And as soon as I put these videos up, I plan to put artwork for this series that I have made for Patreon users. Just click on the link in the description below. Thank you for listening. And for now, sweet dreams.